So this video is about the beach and what goes on in the beach in Da Nang. And um, one thing I will tell those of you who haven't been to Vietnam is the roads are insane. Here is a motorbike with five people with no shoes or helmets or protective wear and it's suicide by scooter. The road rules, how they work is whatever's the biggest on the road has the right of way. So the lines in the middle of the road, I think are just there to sort of um, remind people what side of the road to, to be on, but generally they just ride wherever they feel like. Um, so if you're from the West, like America or the UK or Australia, or even Korea, you'll find this extremely um, disturbing. So having a walk over to this, um, this is a sugarcane bar. So they squeeze the sugarcane. Here's some sugarcane ready to go. It's got a lot of blowflies on it, which is nice, of course. You just hope that blowflies don't lay eggs and then that goes in your drink. They have like, they serve this deep fried rice cake flatbread as well and put chilies on it. So this part of the beach is um, the northern end of the beach in Da Nang. And every day around two o'clock, that's our hotel we stayed in. Every day around two o'clock, all these um, beach chairs come out. And towards the end of the day, um, the community just sort of descends upon the beach and uh, here's a bunch of locals and they were um, fishing clearly and um, but they weren't pulling anything super huge out of the water and a lot of guys were here sort of getting very excited about it they don't seem too concerned about the size of the fish I'd say they um, put these in a fish stew make a broth out of it And yeah, so these guys are doing this most afternoons, catching their own dinner. Because seafood is the um, probably the, the prominent meal. Here's his bag of crabs and fish, so they're going to take those back and wash them and put them in one big pot, no doubt. I don't know how many of these guys actually ate the food, but they all seem to be enjoying getting it. As you can see, there's a lot of fishing trawlers and boats. It's um, pretty much the main focus of the beach area. But it's nice to see normal people on the beach fishing and talking to each other and like a sense of community. Uh, he's gone out here. He swam, swam out about 30, 40 metres. And he's dragging the uh, net back into the shore. And they, they did this quite a few times to pull in as much stock as they could. I mean, I'm quite ignorant. They could possibly be using this for bait, for their, uh, their crab pots and different things. Perhaps they're using it for other forms of fishing. So there's quite a few here, but um, they are smart enough not to eat the, um, the fugu fish. I think that's what you call it is a square shaped puffer fish that's quite poisonous and um, here's the ones they don't eat clearly because they've got poison in them and if you eat that it'll kill you so Da Nang along the shoreline there's got to be 50 fish restaurants and when you go to a restaurant uh, it's quite intimidating because there's not a lot of information in English in fact I went up to this guy and I said have you got a menu because clearly they aren't used to English foreigners and he he basically pointed to all the tubs to say this is the menu so you basically walk up to them and you say generally I want to eat this particular thing here and then you would tell them if you were a local, how you want it cooked. You can see there's a massive variety from razor clams to crabs and lobsters and fish and prawns. Plenty of 
colony of shells and mussels. So at night time these places are just full of people. There's so many people here you assume everyone eats seafood on the beach at night. Here's some prawns that I ordered and some fish. The only downside to this I could probably suggest is that they put so much garlic and spices and herbs on your meat that once it's cooked you probably struggle to taste the seafood anymore and uh, hopefully that's not because the seafood's dead or gone off but that's just how they like it. So it's probably one of the longest esplanade beaches I've been to. Oh, it'd be a good 10 kilometers at least the length of this beach. It's mixed with brand new Sheraton high rises going up to just little boat builders and even just blocks of land with guys planting herbs. But you can tell that the uh, Vietnamese are spending a bit of money on construction along the waterfront, you know, preparing for the future because the country hasn't been open very long, about a decade. So they're not so used to all the tourism. The taxi companies seem to be used to the tourism because they have fairly large taxis in this city. Whereas we went to another city and all the taxis were very small. So just a bit of an idea of the beach life here. You've got tourists and you've got the local boys that come out every afternoon at about five o'clock and they just play soccer, which is really nice to see. You know, that sense of community that um, used to exist in my country, at least in Australia, which doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, in the street and um, people are swimming here every day they're out swimming playing soccer fishing so here's some people chilling out and having their um, coconut drinks and their uh, sugarcane drinks there's the rice crackers I'm talking about and they make those during the day and then bring them down in a big bag to sell at night with chili These are our little crab pots, some sort of bag there with water and um, different weights and ways to create light, I guess, for the, um, for the crabs to get distracted and climb into the cage. This young fella actually did a bit of skydiving from the top of the hill and um, yeah, he said it's the best way to see the, um, the city. So you'll see um, these street vendors making all sorts of things with coconuts. Just be careful, it's not like a normal city in the west. There will be uh, obstacles. And here's, a, uh, here's what's known as the local petrol pump. And you'll see these about the city. And um, that's what a service station looks like. This uh, lady here wanted to make sure her son was famous. So here's his little chance to be on YouTube. He was having a yogurt or something. This is the view from our hotel. So yeah, it wasn't a bad little hotel. It did, it did have its imperfections, don't worry, but at least you could sit there and watch the evening go by or even the day go by. And you could watch all these guys. Oh, that's the beach back there. If you, There's the beach. And there's the bar. I'm very pink. And uh, we're hanging out here, and can you hear the music? Kind of a giveaway. So this is at the southern end where I would assume most of the expats and tourists come. They did have the best wood fire pizza oven pizzas I'd had in a long time. And 
so yeah, this particular bar called The Village is kind of like where you go if you want to live the American Vietnamese holiday dream with um, army jeeps and beer and stuff. Okay, well, uh, that's it for Danang. Enjoy some artwork and um, yeah, you can buy some art if you are attracted to it. <laughs>